Hello brain lovers, welcome to this brain vlog. My God, time flies, it's amazing. We're already in July now, which means six months have gone and we only have six months to go till the end of the year. So it's amazing, time flies, it's crazy. Today I wanna to talk about this. The fact that if we don't do things, we end up doing nothing, realizing nothing. So what have you done so far this year? Well, how can I state this? You have to understand that laziness is actually in our nature. It's built in in our system and this for very good reason. Our brain uses a lot of energy and actually uh, it represents only 2% of uh, the volume of our body. However, it uses 20% of the total energy consumption. So that is not a good balance, right? So we need to uh, watch out for using too much energy and that's exactly what our brain does. It focuses on saving energy as it being as energy efficient as possible, which leads us to actually not being that active. And if we have the choice between doing things very actively and burning a lot of energy or not doing them, our natural tendency will go to not doing them. Are you employed, sir? Employed? <laughs> So over the years, this has helped us, of course, in being more energy efficient. However, in our modern society, with everything that is demanded from us, laziness is not so much seen as something that is very valuable. But at the same time, that brain works against us. So at the same time that we're energy efficient, which is a good thing in theory, if we stay too much in our comfort zone, if we don't move out, if we don't do new things, learn new things, etc., we end up with a shrinking brain. Our brain actually physically shrinks, becomes smaller in size. Now it's only a couple of percentage points, so don't worry about it. We won't end up with a peanut in there. But still, it is not in the interest of our brain to just stay glued in our habits, in our comfort zone and doing the same things over and over again or, or doing as little as possible. No, absolutely not. The solution here, from a biological point of view, there are two of them. We're talking neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. Neurogenesis is the creation of new brain cells and we continue our whole life, even at a very advanced age, we continue to create new brain cells. However, <laughs> You have to know that up to 80% of those new brain cells, after being created, die off within 48 hours. So 80% of all that thing that we do there is basically wasted if we don't do a thing with it. And that's where neuroplasticity comes in. Neuroplasticity or the creation of new connections in our brain. So when we look at neuroplasticity, and I explained that in my course on neuroplasticity, we have basically three degrees of neuroplasticity happening. The first one are just chemical reactions. When we step out of our comfort zone, we do something new for the first time. we end up with uh, chemical reactions and basically fireworks up there and everything is fine and dandy. There's really no real change, but it stimulates the brain, it's good. The second level of neuroplasticity is with structural change. And there is really when we build habits, when we learn new things on a more sustained level. And the third one are functional changes where whole areas of our brain actually change from the purpose of their existence. So some parts of the brain can be allocated to, let's say, a smell and end up having another function and being allocated to, let's say, a hearing. But we won't be talking about that here. The important part here is about that second level. We're talking the structural changes, where we create new connections and where uh, we end up learning new things. That's where we really have to focus because the first one, just the, the chemical reactions, it's not enough. Just getting out of your comfort zone is not enough. When we get to level two, that's where we're really working on our brain on a more sustained level. And basically what we need is ABL, always be learning. And that both laterally, but also in depth. Laterally is basically when you start learning new things that you haven't learned before or done before. So it's the extra step when you go out of your comfort zone. For example, I've never learned to, uh, to juggle. So uh, if I would start to learn that, that would be lateral. Good Lord, I've heard about this cat juggling. You can also go in depth and learn new things about a topic that you already know about. So whatever your topic of choice, whatever your hobby or the content you're working on, when you learn new things about that content, so in my case the brain, each time I learn more about the brain, each time there are more studies coming out, new research, etc., I increase the depth of my knowledge about the brain. So both are good. However, when we reach middle age, there's a trap that most people fall into. Wait, what? 
And that trap is basically, you know already a lot about whatever you become a professional in. So whatever your field of expertise, you become quite accustomed to everything. You've seen it all and you feel you dominate your field or at least the work you're doing, you, you, you're you basically on autopilot. Situation becomes convenient and we don't have to put the extra effort anymore to go the extra length. So. Basically, we become lazy again. That famous brain of ours works again against ourselves. However, as we know already so much about our field of expertise, we don't notice it. We, we believe that we stay on top of things and we probably are. However, we do not stimulate our brain anymore and others still see us as someone who really knows his job. So uh, we're seen as the expert, but we do not push ourselves anymore. We don't go the extra mile anymore. And that's where that famous neuroplasticity becomes lazy itself as well. And the whole mechanism of neuroplasticity starts to slow down. But it's true with everything, you know. The golden rule here is ABL, always be learning. Each one of these little drawers is stuffed with little cards. And each little card is a book or an author. I think that's fascinating. So I picked up uh, piano when I was 42, that's four years ago. And now during the lockdown, I decided to pick up ukulele. But it's not about the ukulele and it's not only about a musical instrument. It can be anything. It can be learning a new language, it can be a new hobby, it can be anything. Anyway, the importance is both sides, right? You learn new things laterally and you learn new things in depth. Now the depth thing is tricky because you might fall into that famous trap, the neuroplasticity trap, where things become too easy and you don't go the extra mile anymore. Even though the in-depth learning is the easiest way and is the more natural way, because our brain is really designed for us to be experts, it's the lateral way, where you learn new skills, where you really have to put in the hours and put the effort in a sustained way over time and not just once. That's where you really will make the difference and be able to allocate those 80% of new brain cells that die otherwise. So what new hobby or skills have you picked up these last six months? Comment below. And as always, like and subscribe. And if you want the real thing, go to brainacademy.com. There you can join over 250,000 students and learn how to use your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen your mind.